To build your first web page, what you want to do to start off with is add a design. Now, it might seem strange, but one of the tools I find easy to design with is PowerPoint, mainly because we can just use this particular shape here and build everything we want. Now, when we're building a web page, what we want to do is we want to contain everything uh, between the top and the bottom of the actual browser. So this will be what's called a wrapper. Now, inside a web page, we have an element such as a header. So I can take that, put it here, I'll change the color, stick it to the top, right? So this is going to be our header. Then we can create a navigation, which will be a lot smaller. And we'll stick it under the header. <clears throat> From here now, We've got two components, a header, where we can put information such as logos and so forth. We can put a navigation bar under it. A lot of sites you'll find navigation under it or actually within the header. In this case, we'll just put it under it. Then what we'll do is we'll put in what's called a CTA. So this is a call to action. This is effectively a big box where everybody gets their attention drawn to. And then what we'll do... After that, this will throw a footer in at the end, okay? Now, because we're just doing this just to figure things out nice and quickly, we'll shrink it to that. So we're basically building one wrapper around it with four rows inside of it. So this is our very first one, something just to get the colors up and running so you can see what we're doing. So to start off with, whenever you're building a website now, what we want to do is we want to keep everything in a folder. Now, if you installed Visual Studio Code correctly, what you can do is on your desktop, create a new folder. We'll call this guy test. We'll go into it. Now, inside here, if I right click, click on show more options, you'll see I have open with code. If I do this, what it's going to do is it's going to open Visual Studio Code with my test folder. Now, I'm going to start by putting in my index page index.html like so now inside uh, VS code if I can do a control plus I can increase the font size to make things easier to see and I'll shrink this down a little bit and what I can do is I can put in an exclamation mark to start off with this is Emmet what this does is now if I hit enter it puts all this information in for me without me having to type it up. Now, this is the base skeleton of a web page. When we're designing stuff, it goes into the head, such as this meta content, the title. If we're writing styles on the page, so internal styles, we write it in a section here. All of our HTML sits between these two body tags. When we do this, we do it in what's called a div box. Now, in HTML5, these div boxes have been given names, such as header and footer and main and so forth. In this particular case, we're just going to use div boxes and we're going to put what's called a class on them. Now, a class is a way to style up these boxes. Every web page is a box. So, because of our design, we're going to use Emmet to speed things up. So, if I go dot wrapper. This is going to be the wrapper to contain everything. And then I can say inside my wrapper, I have a header. And at the same level, I have a navigation bar. And then at the same level, I have my call to action, my CTA. And then I have my footer. Notice we have the IntelliSense kicking in. If we keep that up, it means when I hit enter now, it will build the actual HTML code for us like this. Notice, this div goes to this div. Whenever we want a style to happen, we want it to occur within the opening and closing div. So this slash means closing. This is a header. This is our navigation. Goes from there to there, CTA and footer. Now, from here, we're going to style it internally. So we're not using an external style sheet yet. That comes later. So everything goes up here in the style command. So when we do this, there are a couple of things we do to start off with. The first thing 
is we would create what's called a CSS reset. So in other words, we make sure all the browsers are playing the same game. There's this thing called margin, which is spacing. And there's padding, which is also spacing. We set these guys down to zero. So that way we have full control over that design. Then we tell the system that we want box sizing to be border box. So that is all controlled. And then we go overflow X, which is the left to right the horizontal. We're telling it anything that forces stuff outside, we're going to hide it. Now from here, that star basically means everything gets affected by this. From here, we're gonna do it one step at a time. So to start off with, we'll do a wrapper. So wrap like this. Now, every div box has roughly three things you need to do if you wanna see it. You have to give it a width, you have to give it a height, and then you have to give it a color, so a background color. So because we want this to cover our browser, we're gonna create a width of 100 VW. VW means viewport width. So this way our pages are responsive to the device they're on. Your height, 100 VH, and we'll give it a background color. Notice how I'm using IntelliSense so I don't have to type out everything. You can use the cursor keys to go up and down. Hit enter when you select one. And it just speeds things up a little. So here we go. So that's my wrapper, width, height, and background. So now if I load this up, I should see it. One of the things you should see in regards to here is see how we've got that circle up here next to the name? That means the file hasn't been saved yet. So we can go file, save, or we can use the keyboard shortcut of control S. Now that that's done that, the file has now been saved. Now, in the previous video, we talked about installing the extension live server, this guy right here, okay? So to use that, we can right click on a black part of the page and go open with live server. This works with front end code. So if we click on that, it's gonna build its own little web server. And what it does is it opens up a web page like this. So this is our uh, wrapper setup. So now from here, let's see. The next one is a header. So here we go dot header. Okay, now that dot tells the system that it's looking for this class. So this is the dot and the name. So we want width, 100 VW, height, we'll give it 10 VH, a background color. Let's go with, um, let's do with a yellow. Okay, now notice we're not saved. I'm gonna control S to save, and I'm gonna alt tab to open. This has already updated itself, so I didn't have to hit the refresh up here. If you look at the address bar, notice how it says 127001 with the port number. That tells you it's running in the local server. And that's what Live Server does. So that's our first part. Next, we can put in navigation. So let's go dot. Navigation, make sure it's the curly braces. Put in the width, 100V, 100VW. Height, we'll give it, um, we'll give it 5VH. And we'll give it a background color of white. We'll do a control S to save and alt tab to check. And there's our update. Now from here, let's look at our CTA. So dot CTA braces. So the width is going to be 100 VW. Now it doesn't always have to be 100 VW. At the moment, we're just doing it the simple ones just to get a feel. Now for the height. What we're working on is all of our height numbers here are going to work inside that 100. So we're going to basically build our footer at the same time. So if I go dot footer, width 100 VW, height, let's give it 15 VH, and we'll give it a background color of, say, aquamarine. Now, from here, we've got 15 and five is 20, and 10, that takes us up to 30, which means I've got a height of 70 VH left over. So that's where we wanna put our content. 
and then we'll give it a background color of let's go with tomato <laughs> okay so remember this is just to get these colors up so we can see the boxes normally once we have our positioning laid out with what we're doing here we would then take these background colors off and use the actual colors we need so i'll save it alt tab and as you can see here now we have our rows coming into play and that is pretty much how we would work with a very simple web page with our content fitting down between these guys here So take, for example, if we wanted to put a block of text in here, we can use what's called a P tag. So this is a paragraph tag. Okay. And then inside of that, I'm going to put in some dummy text, which is the lorem ipsum text. So if you enter. Now notice how Visual Studio Code has extended this all the way out. To put word wrap on, I can do Alt Z to make it easier to see. I'll do a Control S to save. I'll alt tab out and as you can see up here our text has now appeared one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're building stuff inside a web page is how we actually keep things organized and easy to see so at the moment everything's on the one page and we'll move on to that in the next video